and it did absolutely nothing to the steel connection. Maybe thermite cannot melt steel, and maybe National Geographic was right. But the steel did not melt, meaning that perhaps a container could be made out of steel after all. Using an ordinary steel box tube, I had a slot milled along one edge. Welding the bottom and using clamps on the top to hold the powdered thermate in, I bolted it to a steel beam vertically. I called this device my thermitic box cutter. With only one and a half pounds of thermate, or less than one one hundredth of what the National Geographic experts use for their experiment. Not only was I able to melt steel, but it also sliced a vertical cut. So I made a slightly larger thermitic box cutter and used two 3 8 bolts drilled and tapped on one side of the connection. It only took a slight twist to break it completely off. I noticed as the thermate burned, it tended to lose its cutting power, perhaps because it could expand into the area where the box cutter previously burned. So I built a piston-driven box cutter using a compressed car hatch piston. I added sheets of tungsten to minimize the burnout and allow the piston to slide better. I then bolted my contraption to the flange of the column and ignited the white-hot magnesium. It appears that not only can thermate melt steel, but it can also cut vertical columns. So why bother to use incendiaries like thermate and not high explosives? I think it's all about keeping things quiet before the main event. Using thermate may take longer to weaken such large...